It is very, very important for us to know that the religion we follow, Islam, is a way of life. It does not have rules and regulations only connected to one aspect of living. But in fact, it includes every aspect of living. And if we were to live according to Islam, we would actually be very happy people. Many people today are depressed because they earn through the week and they spend that money in the weekend on clubbing, perhaps at a nightclub. Sometimes they waste it on something that would result in the depletion of their money the same weekend or the end of the month, depending on when they get paid. And then they are depressed once again because they need to start from scratch. They start earning again and they waste that money once again. And this life becomes so depressing because they are getting nowhere. They are getting absolutely nowhere. We are so upset with this life. It's all about a show. I must show the rest of the world exactly what I don't have. I must pretend that I am someone that I am not. I need to show the world and that's what would make me temporarily happy. Whereas as Muslimin, you are taught to be yourself. Those who love you based on what you look like exactly without having made yourself up in a way that you don't look like what you're supposed to be looking like, then it's unfortunate. It's actually something really sad when a person gets to that level. But those who love you for who you are without Changing yourself are the genuine people. They are the ones who will bring a true smile to your face. A person who can tell you that he or she loves you as you are when you wake up first thing in the morning, they really love you. Subhanallah. But for those who look at you when you're perhaps at a shopping mall or on the streets and you're all made up, and that's what they like. It's the makeup they like. I'm so sorry to be speaking about makeup the second time today. Like I said, I'm not saying it's haram, but the obsession. People become so obsessed with some of these things that they forget to focus upon the reality of life. The day they don't have that, they become depressed. They wouldn't even like to answer the door. So when it comes to Islam, it teaches us to be who we are. Your identity, you're supposed to be a person. What you see is what you get. Subhanallah. When I pray, I must pray with my heart. That heart needs to be cleansed. A lot of people pray, but their heart is not cleansed. It means there is something wrong with this prayer of yours. There is definitely something wrong with the prayer. The reason is, if you prayed correctly to Allah, it would clean your heart. It would soften your heart. You would learn to love the rest of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, starting with mankind. So if you are compassionate to other human beings, it means your prayer is in order. But if you are not, there is something wrong with your prayer. He or she who is linked to his maker, definitely a better person. He or she who is linked to his maker is definitely a better person to the rest of the creatures of the same maker. Remember that. So when we become horrible to those whom we live with, there is something wrong with our link with Allah, with our link with our own maker. When we are horrible to our parents, to our children, to our brothers and sisters, to our uncles and aunts, to our in-laws, to our relatives, when we are not patient with them, when we are not tolerant of their different ways and habits sometimes. It could mean we have a problem with ourselves. And this is why my brothers and sisters, life is a struggle to become a better person. No matter who you are, no matter what level of spirituality you think you are upon, you will never be upon perfection. So keep on working. Keep on trying harder. 
Keep on perfecting your relationship with the rest of mankind. Sometimes people come to me complaining. Complaining about their children. You know, my son, he's disobedient. But to be honest with you, sometimes, sometimes it's the parents who don't treat their children correctly. Sometimes it's you, my beloved father, who is the problem. It's not your son. Sometimes it's you, my beloved mother, who is the problem. It's not your son or your daughter. So as much as we say, be obedient or be kind to your parents, we have to tell the parents to be merciful to their children, to understand what their children want and what Allah wants and how to strike a balance between the two. If we all had perfect children from the beginning, what was the point of us being in their lives? We have to help them. We have to help them grow up, understand things, looking at things from a certain angle, certain perspective, being able to get along with other people, understanding that not everything you want, you're going to get. But the problem, the problem with the parents is that at times we don't understand that this is actually a child who belongs first to Allah. And then Allah has given me the chance to say that the child temporarily belongs to me too. Ultimately, our children belong to Allah. He made them in the first place. He gave them to us. May Allah bless those without children with children. May Allah bless those who don't have children with children. Say Ameen. MashaAllah. But at the same time, those who do have children, those children are Allah's. They belong to Allah. You have them for a moment, for a short period of time. If He wants, He can take them away before you. Or He can take them away in infancy, childhood, teenage, or a little bit later. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's His decision. It goes to show that He is the owner. He is the one who owns you and I. He decides when I'm going to return to Him, it's His decision. And at the same time, whether or not I will have children is His decision. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept rules and regulations for us. I want to speak about something very important today. Many of us are searching for happiness. Many of us are searching for contentment. Contentment lies in adopting what the Almighty says we should be adopting. Never be selfish. When you are selfish, you cannot be content. Remember that. When you are selfish, you cannot be happy. When you reach out to others, you become happy. When you see the smile on the face of your daughter-in-law, that's when the mother-in-law will be content and vice versa. Sorry to give you that example. When you see the smile on the face of the orphan, that is when you will be happy. But that orphan happens to be a child, perhaps even of your own brother who may have passed away. The orphan happens to be a child whom you are connected to. Many of us, when a father passes away, leaving behind little girls, for example, we tend to usurp their wealth. We cheat the women. We cheat the little girls. Regarding what? The inheritance, the estate, the estate of the deceased. Whereas Allah has given them a share. The brothers sometimes are unfair to their own sisters. The uncles are unfair to their nieces sometimes. So if a person wants to be happy himself, fulfill the rights of these little orphans. If Allah tells you through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam of the importance of looking after these orphans and how you can earn paradise through fulfilling the rights of widows and orphans then obviously we need to take it seriously the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says ana wa kafilu al-yatimi ka hatayni fil jannah 
Myself and the one who looks after the orphans will be like this in paradise. And he showed the two fingers bringing them together. So if you're going to look after the orphans, you will definitely be a person who's happy. If you're selfish, you won't be happy. So I want you, every one of you, and myself included, to put a smile on the face of someone else every single day. A person who may be connected to you, your spouse to start with. Imagine, think up ways of making your husband smile. Think up ways of making your wife smile. MashaAllah. Think up a way, an idea. Even if it means to take the microphone away from the MC. If she smiled, I've achieved. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think up ways of making your children smile. Think up ways of making your parents smile. Subhanallah. Many of us probably lost. We're lost for ideas. No. Sometimes if you don't know how to make them smile, break into a smile yourself and see what happens. Subhanallah. Just break into a smile. And they will start smiling back at you. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. That's what it is. So Allah has kept a smile contagious because you don't have to say things. Sometimes you can do something and you don't have to do something complex. You can do something very, very simple to make them smile. But the problem is we've become selfish. It's all about myself. I'm searching for happiness. Happiness lies in making others happy. That's where happiness lies. We are sad because we make everyone depressed. They are upset because of us. We block their lives. We stop the good things they want. And then how do we expect good things to come to us? Right? Reach out to others. Do something for them. Your time, your effort, your energy, your expertise. Use it to help people. It should not only be about yourself. The reason why so many people are depressed on earth today is because we are all living for ourselves. We want to earn. We don't want to reach out with our earnings. Our time is for ourselves. We come home from a long day at work and we spend our time on the mobile phone when your wife and your children or your husband and so on have been waiting for you all day, sometimes more than a day, depending on how you work. And you come back and you're on your phone. Doing what? Nothing. That phone can be set aside. Set aside your phones for two hours every day. Set it aside. A lot of you might say, I can't do that. Well, for one hour, set it aside. Switch it off. Off. Put it on flight mode. And you know what? You'll enjoy a beautiful journey without even going out of your house. You will be talking to those you are supposed to be talking with. I promise you, write it down or make a mental note of it. Switch your phones off for one hour inside the house when you are with your family members. Switch it off. Not because you want to hide something illicit. No. No. It should be for the right reasons. The reason is you would like to communicate with people you are supposed to be talking to. If you died... There and then, they would be responsible to make sure you are given a decent burial. So this is why we say, people are depressed because they've become selfish. That's what it is. When I earn, it's about me. That's it. This is my money. That's, I want to save up for my things. Take out a little bit, give it to a charity. Take out a little bit, reach out to those who don't have anything. Take out a little bit, give it as a gift to someone. Give a little bit of pocket money to your child, making sure that you've taught the child how to spend. And I'm not saying a large amount. I'm not saying give your child a large amount so that he or she gets spoiled in a way that tomorrow when you don't have it, they turn to haram means to earn it. But I'm definitely saying once in a while, they deserve to be spoiled. Subhanallah, don't be selfish. Go out and greet people. Go out. We heard a few ago 
We heard a few moments ago about how the ROU team goes out to give hampers to the poor. Well, join them once, at least once. And guess what? Bring some hampers yourself. Contribute financially and then go out with them. See how you feel. When you see homeless people living under the bridges and the flyovers of your own city, for example, living in ghettos and slums who don't even have food, and you've given them one meal, once, only once, you've reached out to them with a meal, trust me, you will smile for a long time. It will bring about a feeling within you that humanity will return to you. That's something a lot of us have lost. To do good is not difficult, but we need to think about it. Be in good company and you'll notice how you feel good because that good company will remind you about reaching out to others. Today, my brothers and sisters, there are so many of us. Do you agree? Many, mashallah. You've come out in large numbers by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a sickness. We won't greet anyone unless we know them. That's a problem. The brothers as well as the sisters. We go to the masjid, the house of Allah. We don't greet people unless we know them. Or unless they are someone, someone big. The who's who, you know. The wealth, like I always say, we greet the money, not the person. And the evidence of it is when they don't have money, they're no longer greeted. I saw people incline towards those who have wealth. Wow, they incline towards them. Hey, how are you doing, man? That's because he has those $20, you know. The minute it's gone, no more greeting. You, you walk right past the uncle, even if he greets you, no more response, no reply. Forget about greeting. When people greet us, we don't bother replying. Who? Greeting me? Me? And the sister says, yes, I greeted you. No? And you just carry on. Hmm, mistake. I think you've mistaken identity. It's a sign of the hour. Do you know that? Where people will only greet because they know. We are taught to greet everyone. Greet them, smile at them. Those you don't know. You could make their day. You don't know how depressed someone might be by greeting them, by smiling at them, by acknowledging them. You may help them. And as a result, the Almighty will help you. But the problem is we don't think this way. We're selfish. I've got a problem. I'm stressed myself. Why should I greet the people? Well, you want to de-stress? Greet them. Greet the people. Smile at them. They won't even dream that you have a problem. They will think, mashallah, this person's life is so beautiful. They've got time to smile. Well, they will start smiling too. They will forget about their problem for a little while. And guess what? Through that and the blessings of the good deed that you have done, we call it barakah. Through the barakah of that beautiful deed, you will be able to achieve that happiness and taste it. We might hear what I'm saying today, but trust me, you're going to go back home 10 o'clock tonight and with your own family members, you're going to sulk once again. For what? Why? Go back home, make a difference, change things in the house. Call everyone, sit them down and tell them from now on, we're going to greet each other. When I was young and up to this day, I would greet my parents before I go to bed if they're there. Assalamu alaikum and I'm gone to bed. When I get up first thing in the morning, Assalamu alaikum, I greet my parents. But the new generation, no way. They're not bothered about greeting their parents. They will duck and dive and hide. And they're probably sitting on their iPads until midnight. Only God knows what they're doing. Where is all this gone? Where are the etiquettes gone? The problem is with us. They don't see us doing it, so they don't do it. Or we haven't taught them since they were young. But learn to greet even those in your own home. The greeting in Islam, as you heard a little bit earlier from Sheikh Muslih, this greeting is absolutely important, a salam. So start with it in your own home. Greet the people every time you enter, whenever you come back home, and every time you want to go to bed, and whenever you get up, greet, say things. It's a prayer, it's a powerful prayer, and smile and be good. And learn not to be lazy. Laziness makes you depressed. Did you know that? 
When you're lazy, you don't want to do things. You don't even want to turn off the light. So now we're in the room and I'm telling my son to turn the light off and he's saying, but you turn the light off. And we're looking at each other and then we sleep with the light on. <laughs> Mashallah, electricity bill I'd rather pay, but I wouldn't like to turn off that light. Why? We're both lazy. May Allah forgive us. I hope you don't think I'm talking about myself. But anyway, it happens in our homes. We become lazy. No one wants to get up, you know, to make the coffee, for example. And I'm not saying it's just the job of a female. No, the males too sometimes need to get up and do something. You can make the waffles, can't you, on a Sunday morning? You can make the eggs and the breakfast on a Sunday morning, can't you? Look at them. Look at them. No nodding, no nothing, no acknowledgement. Allahu Akbar. Come on. Can't you make eggs? Can you not make eggs? Oh, mashallah. Now they're saying yes. Alhamdulillah. Don't worry. You're on TV. They're going to see who said yes and who didn't. You're in trouble. You better know how to make eggs by the will of Allah. I'm sure you do. But we become lazy. It's laziness. When you are selfless, you contribute to that home. It becomes a home of happiness because we smile and we plant a smile on the faces of others in a way that that smile just doesn't want to go. This is what I mean. Subhanallah. Once in a while, do things. Spoil the people. Those you live with to start with. And that's when you'll be able to do it with others. What is the point of someone who wants to put a smile on the rest of the world, but there's no smile on the faces of the, their own family members? You're helping the world to solve the world's problems by trying to help everyone else. But in your own home, you need help. Start off at home. The best are those who are best at home first and then everywhere else. Don't be from among those who are hypocritical. Don't be from among those who procrastinate. That's another problem. You leave things. Okay, I want to do this, but I'll do it. It's okay. It's very early. It's actually only nine o'clock now. I can do that. Maybe we'll see. Guess what will happen before you know it. You'll be off to bed. You'll be sleeping and then leave it for tomorrow and tomorrow never comes. Do you know that? So when you want to do things, do it now. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Do it now. Get up and do something. Make a change. You make it now. This is why we say when you want to change, when you want to repent to the Almighty, you never ever say, I will do it on Friday. I will do it when Ramadan starts. I will do it at the end of the year. I will do it when I go for Hajj. You may never see that Hajj. You may never see that Ramadan. I will do it now and here. I want to repent to the Almighty. I want to quit my bad ways and habits. Happiness is snatched away through sin. When you transgress against the commands of the Almighty, your happiness is gone. When you transgress, your happiness is gone. You don't know why am I not happy? It's because you're sinning every day. A person who's on drugs, trust me, they lead a very, very depressed life. The only time they might feel a little bit high is exactly when they're high. That's it. And once that high is no more, you can tell them goodbye. It's depressing. It is. It's very sad. And it's a false feeling of happiness. But in actual fact, it is a sadness. It is a depressive condition. So all these sins that you'd like to give up give them up now and don't say you know what it might be so difficult and it might this if you have faith and conviction nothing is difficult you do it and trust me in an, in no time you will feel so happy you will feel content you will gain your family once again you will gain your happiness once again things will start becoming in order it will take a little bit of time be patient but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you if you want to do things for the right reasons, you will find the right solutions coming in your direction. The, you know, the result of your action will be positive rather than negative. My brothers and sisters, these are just a few life skills. These are a few tips, but they are taken from your faith, from Islam. Did you know that Muhammad 
has taught us all of this and much more than all of this. He's taught us not to be lazy, not to procrastinate. He's taught us to reach out to people, to greet people, to smile, to create a positive vibe around you, not negative. Anything happens and you look at the worst scenario. When you look at people, see the good in them. The weakness with us, we see the bad in people. You see a sister, you've had two problems with her. That's it. You put a cross next to her name, you don't want to see her. You see a brother, you've had two issues with him. That's it. It's the end of everything. Put a cross on him. No. Yes, there may be some people who are bad company, bad influence. You've had many bad experiences. You will greet. You will respond to a greeting. You may not want to associate more with them because they have negative vibes or a negative vibe around them in that sense. There are people who perhaps are very depressing. You may want to stay away, but the initial greeting is important. And that olive branch is of utmost importance. What I mean here is, if you have had an issue, you should always be open-minded to be able to solve the matter, if possible. Give them the opportunity. And I'm not saying that you need to give up what is right in order to solve the problem. No! You don't give up what's right, but you try and discuss it to be able to solve the matter, if possible. Most cases, we will be able to solve the matter. Sometimes we won't. Sometimes you might want to distance yourself. But remember, my brothers and sisters, many of us have problems for petty reasons. Petty. We look at the negative of a situation and we become depressed. Look at the positives. So many things that happen in our lives that seem to be negative actually have been the most positive things that have ever happened in our lives. I know of people who've been diagnosed with sickness and illness. May Allah grant us all cure. I mean. And they come up and say, I'm so sad. I'm so depressed. And you know, you have a chat with them. You talk to them and you remind them. And one of the questions I is, did you used to pray five times a day before you were sick? No, I didn't. Now that you've been diagnosed, do you pray five times a day? Yes. Well, then that's something positive. How can it be? Well, you pray. You call out to the Almighty, don't you? Yes. And sometimes if you haven't yet done that, if you haven't yet turned, your, you know, turned away from your bad habits, if you haven't yet turned away from your bad habits, perhaps the Almighty might keep you in that condition a little bit longer. It softened your heart. You became closer to your family. You saw these are the people dedicated. They are serving me. They are pushing me on a wheelchair, for example. They are, they are feeding me, for example. They care for me. And when you become cured ultimately and finally, your relationship improved. Not only your relationships improved, but your relationship with Allah Almighty has improved. So this is why when you look at the positives that came out of it, there are far more. In a narration, the Prophet, peace be upon him, speaks about how a person who has been sick and ill through part of their life, when they see the reward of the patience that they bore through their lives on the Day of Judgment, they will say, why didn't you keep me sick and ill longer so that I could get a bigger reward? Subhanallah. Right now, we won't understand that. Because when you're sick, even if you just have a cough, you want it to be cured like now. My brothers and sisters, we are blessed with so much. Take a look at what you have. You have a lot. And the way to look at what you have is by looking at those who don't have. Take a look at the refugees who are trying to save themselves from being bombed. They jump into a little boat. Something that you wouldn't even use. And they want to cross the Mediterranean without much food, without much clothing. Most of them don't even make it. A lot of them don't make it. What made them do that? And they get there and only Allah knows how they are treated and what happens. Right now, they're being sent back. And what about us? We're just sitting here relaxed, but we're still complaining. 
complaining about everything. I've got these shoes, you know. But I wanted Adidas. Huh, come on, other people don't even have shoes. And you will be fortunate enough to buy what you want as well. But the only time you will be able to give thanks to Allah is when you really sit and ponder over what exactly you have in comparison to those who don't have. They don't have anything sometimes. Nothing. And some of them are so happy and delighted even without anything. Look at some of the children in the refugee camps and how they are smiling, they are playing games not on iPads and not on Android devices, not on Playstations. They are playing games on the floor. You know the the, the hopscotch, when we were kids, we used to play hopscotch. And they are smiling and happy. You tell your children, four years old, hopscotch, they will look at you and think it's some form of an ice cream. They won't even know what you're talking about. And if you tell them, we were so excited when we were kids, let's go out, I'll draw it for you on the sand, and we'll be hopping, they will wonder, are you crazy? Are you mad? But those my age and perhaps a little bit older would know exactly what I'm talking about. Because the, the delight, the happiness, the joy that we achieved by just jumping, hopping. You know, I recall my little sisters used to actually skip and they used to play some game with the, with the string, with a little rope. And they used to jump this way and that way and this way and that way and compete with each other. And that was like sort of the in thing, early morning we wanted to do that. And in the afternoon we wanted to do that. And today it's become so different. We're still not happy. Imagine, we're still not happy. Why? Something is grossly wrong. Something is grossly wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. What is wrong? What is wrong is the heart. The heart has become clouded. It is not cleansed in the real way. We don't have a feeling for one another anymore. We don't talk to one another anymore. We don't speak to one another. And when we speak, we have an attitude. We have an attitude. You're speaking to your spouse. Say some good words. Say some sweet words. Say some beautiful words. Attract them with your ways of talking. Some of us in our marriages, we chase our spouses away because of the way we speak. Learn how to talk. Say things in a beautiful way. The way you talk to others sometimes outside, you know when you're walking in the mall and suddenly something happens, you break a glass in a store, for example. How do you talk to the people? I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Really, I didn't. You know, I, that's how you would say things, right? What did you do? You made an expression. You wanted to perhaps strike a chord in the heart of the person you're talking to. And you apologized. But in our own homes, no expressions, no apologies. We don't, we're not interested in striking any chord. It's like, you know what? Come here. Come here. I want to show you what you did. Come here. Relax. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that relaxation. MashaAllah. May Allah help us in a way that we can smile. We can also address the people in our own homes who've broken things the way we would like to be addressed when we break things elsewhere. Think about how you talk. Think about the expression on your face. This is the problem sometimes. We say, I've got a clean heart. But the way we say it is so ugly. It's a dirty way of saying it. I've got a clean heart. If you think I've got a dirty heart, you've got a... Look at the expression on your face. So scary. Come on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. What I've told you today is very simple. But I promise you, we will still go home and not practice upon it. And that's why we're not getting anywhere. We're not happy. We still won't achieve that happiness. We don't want to develop a link with Allah. We don't want to develop a link with the rest of the creation of Allah. We don't want to help out. We don't want to smile. We don't want to reach out to people. We still won't greet people we don't know. We will walk out of this stadium today and we still won't greet people. Only those we know. I challenge you, my brothers and sisters, 
to greet those sitting nearby, to smile at them, to make them feel happy. We have a problem even in the masjid. Can I tell you what happens? You have the brothers who are regular goers for prayers. They go regularly. Sometimes, and even the sisters, some of them who are, you know, fulfilling their prayers and so on. When a person walks in sometimes who's not usually there or who doesn't look, who doesn't look like what we would have expected a person who prays to look. I don't even know what that's supposed to be, but a person doesn't look like us and we give them a dirty look. They're not welcome here. If you are welcoming to someone who's coming to the masjid for the first time in their lives, wallahi, that could just be your ticket to paradise. A few days ago, I was in Malaysia. And someone actually told me that they entered a place of worship, a masjid, to pray. And they were not properly dressed. They were, you know, not looking like a Muslim should be looking. And their life changed because the people welcomed this person. And said, oh, you're most welcome and smiled. And made them feel at home. Wow. And I'm busy thinking, wow, whilst listening to this, those people, this could be their ticket to paradise. You change somebody's life. But when they come, even for a religious talk sometimes, religious talk in the masjid or elsewhere, and you have people sometimes who've come there just to listen to what's happening, the way we treat them, the way we look at them, we make them feel like you're not welcome here. What are you doing here? If that's the case, you've just snatched your own happiness away. That's what you've done. But smile at them. Make them feel happy. The next time, you will see them in a better condition. The next time, you might see them somewhere else, maybe at the beach. You might see them in a condition where you need help and they came to help you because they remembered you from somewhere. But we've stopped doing this. This is why I challenge you today. As you're walking out, please greet the people. Talk to them. Smile at them. Say one or two nice things. Oh, how are you? What's happening? Don't embarrass. Don't ask questions that's going to turn people away. How much do you earn, my sister? You know, he said, ask a few questions. I want to know, how much do you earn? How much do I earn? Where do you work? You don't need to know where I work. All these questions are known as excess that which is going to chase people away you don't need to know anything sister how much do you weigh <laughs> come on weigh that's the last thing you ask a woman in fact nowadays the men are becoming conscious of it may allah forgive us so when i say ask a few questions i mean how are you doing mashallah i'm so glad to see you here did you enjoy the talk mashallah what are the points you thought were good man or you don't need to ask what are the points you thought were good, but you can say, I thought it was okay. I thought it was, you know, this point was good and that point was good and I'm going to work on that. By saying that, you've already made someone feel a sense of identity. I'm a human being. They might think the same points you raised are valid for themselves. At the end of the day, we're all human beings. But the difficulty is, okay, we heard it was a good talk. We'll go home and we'll say it was a good talk. And a week later, we'll say it was a good talk. And when we come back next year, we'll say last year was a good talk. But nothing happened. Your life didn't change. Nothing happened to you. Zero. If that's the case, we're getting nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. But even if you don't tell people it was a good talk, but your life has changed, people will know it was a good talk because they've seen that it has impacted on my life. Sometimes... We want to see a speaker. Oh, I want to see this person. I really desperately want to see that sheikh and that sheikh. For what? What's the purpose? Why? What's the big deal? Well, if that's going to change your life because you're going to hear a good word and you're going to seize the opportunity to be shaken, then indeed it was worth it. But if not, and it was just all to become famous, you know, taking a selfie with the sheikh, for example, making me famous, what's the point? 
Like they say, some people are known in the heavens and not known on earth. No one knows about them. But the angels know them very well because of the good they do. And others are well known on earth. But they're not known in the heavens because they've done nothing grand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from the latter. So my brothers and sisters, I'd like to continue tomorrow on a different note altogether. I want to speak tomorrow about gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and achieving forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is a beautiful topic. We all want hope. We all want to feel that Allah loves us. There is a way to do that. There is a way to achieve that. But for now, I'd like you to reach out to the rest of the creatures of Allah. Starting with human beings. And I end by saying, do you know there is a narration, not one, but several narrations that make mention of people who were granted entry into paradise by being kind to a dog or a cat or some animals. I'm sure you know of those narrations. Kindness to a cat, the woman who was quite sinful, earned paradise. Kindness to a dog, the man who was quite a bad guy, earned paradise. When I say a bad guy, I mean he didn't really have many good deeds, but he was kind to a dog. And the, the sister was kind to, or the lady was kind to, a cat. If kindness to a dog and a cat can get you paradise, what do you think kindness to another human being who's not a Muslim will get you? Good question. And if kindness to another human being who's not a Muslim would get you to paradise, what do you think kindness to a Muslim would get you? And if kindness to a Muslim would get you paradise, then what do you think kindness to a family member would get you? And if kindness to a family member would get you paradise, then what do you think kindness to your own spouse would get you? We all want paradise, but please, let's try and work towards it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all acceptance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the love that we are supposed to be feeling for one another. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us work according to that love within his pleasure. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us in Jannah. <laughs> سله روي القلب من نفحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان